And now on to our dinosaur of the day, which is Triceratops, and made an appearance in Jurassic World and Jurassic Park, of course. We've mentioned Triceratops before in episode 21 in our interview with Josh Cotton, where he was telling us about the big debates between Triceratops and Taurosaurus, which I'll go into in a little bit again. So Triceratops' name means three-horned face. There's two species right now. It's Triceratops horridus and Triceratops corsus. Charles Marsh named Triceratops in 1889, and Triceratops is quadrupedal, which means it walks on four legs, and it was an herbivore, and it had a very large skull. It's a ceratopsian, specifically a chasmosaurinae, and it's grouped as a chasmosaurinae because it has brow horns. And Chasmosaurinae, again, is a subfamily of Ceratopsid. Triceratops lived in the Cretaceous, and it was one of the last dinosaurs to go extinct. Its fossils have been found in the U.S. and Colorado, Montana, South Dakota, Wyoming, as well as Canada and Alberta and Saskatchewan. It grew to about 30 feet long, or 9 meters, and it weighed over 11,000 pounds, or 5,000 kilograms, though some may have weighed more than 15,000 pounds. Its skull was about one-third the length of its body, and it had a short neck frill and three horns. The two biggest horns were above Triceratops' eyes, about one meter long, and they had a smaller nose horn in the snout. A lot of Triceratops remains have been found, so it was a dominant herbivore in North America in the late Cretaceous. Triceratops is also one of the most popular dinosaurs, though there have been a lot of misconceptions and controversy over it. In the 1900s, a lot of Triceratops fossils were found, uh, but the skulls varied the way they looked a lot. So because of this, there were a lot of species that were named. But in 1986, two paleontologists, Ostrom and Velnhofer, wrote that there was only the type species, Triceratops horridus, was real, because the variation in the skulls was actually mixed just individuals looking a little different and fossils that were distorted over time. Since Triceratops was discovered in the 1800s, 16 species have been proposed, but now, of course, two are valid. Triceratops horridus probably evolved into Triceratops prorsus over the span of one to two million years, at least according to a 2014 study in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences journal. This study examined fossils from the Hell Creek Formation, which had lower, middle, and upper geological subdivisions. So the middle subdivision fossils had a combination of features that were found in the lower and upper subdivisions, which is why they think Horridus evolved into the second Triceratops species. And Catherine Forrester wrote in a later study about the difference between Triceratops Horridus and Persis, as well as what was at one time known as Triceratops Hatchery but now has been named as a new genus as Nedoceratops hatchery. They were found in different levels of strata, which means that they're active at different times. So she's kind of the reason there are two valid species now instead of just one or possibly three. Other species that are kind of dubious that have been named as Triceratops are Albertensis, Altacornis, Gallius, Ingens, Maximus, and Sulcatus. But just for reference, Triceratops horridus means rough, for the rough texture of its bones. And of course, there's been a huge debate over Triceratops versus Taurosaurus. So just to recap what we talked about in episode 21, John Scanella theorized in 2009 that Triceratops was the same as Taurosaurus in a paper that was co-authored by Jack Horner. And they said that these animals lived at the same time because the fossils were found in the same places and Triceratops was a juvenile version of Taurosaurus. This is because Triceratops had a short frill and Taurosaurus had a longer frill with holes to reduce its weight. And they also said that Netoceratops was a growth stage between Triceratops and Taurosaurus. So the evidence that they used to support their theory is that other types of Ceratopsians, both juvenile and adult specimens, have been found where the juveniles have short frills and the adults have longer frills. This theory was very controversial. In 2011, Andrew Fark said that Netoceratops was its own genus and there was too much change required for a Triceratops skull to change to a Taurosaurus skull. And in 2012, Daniel Field and Nicholas Longridge from Yale University studied 35 specimens, and they said there were skulls of juvenile Taurosaurus and adult uh, Triceratops. And also, in some locations, only Triceratops or only Taurosaurus were found. Scanella, his response was that some of the fossils that they had studied could be transitional. Either way, Taurosaurus was named in 1891 after Triceratops, which was named in 1889, so no matter what the outcome of the debate, Triceratops will keep its name. 
Going into the history of Triceratops, Triceratops fossil was found in Wyoming in the 1880s and shipped to the Smithsonian Museum in DC. It's been on display since 1905, and it was the first mounted Triceratops in the world. The original display had, according to the website, quote, skeletal elements from over a dozen different individual Triceratops, some of which weren't the same size and gave us bones that were too small for the skeleton. And it also had, quote, several sculpted elements that technicians made by hand and the foot bones of a different dinosaur, a duckbill dinosaur, to replace missing Triceratops bones. So uh, the way it's depicted is a little bit out of date, and in 2001 they unveiled a new mount that was more accurate. And this Triceratops in the Smithsonian in DC is nicknamed Hatcher. Scientists used to think Triceratops walked with its two front legs sprawled out to support its weight, more like a reptile or lizard, but now they think that Triceratops walked upright with its elbows bowing out to the sides, like a modern rhinoceros. In a few ways it's similar to a modern rhinoceros, like it may have charged at predators. Triceratops had hoof-like claws and a thick bumpy hide, and again, large brows, and in a 2006 study in the journal Proceedings of the Royal Society found that Triceratops' brow horns twisted and lengthened with age, so they started off very stubby, then curved backward, and then pointed in the opposite direction over time. Scientists have found a Triceratops skin impression, which has bristle-like fibers, so it probably had these fibers around the tail, and Triceratops' toes on its front two feet pointed to the sides, not forwards, which is different from stegosaurs, ankylosaurs, and sauropods. Scientists consider this to be a primitive trait, and it shows that Ceratopsians' direct ancestors may have been bipedal, so they could have used their hands for grasping and support instead of just supporting their weight. To support its weight, Triceratops only used the first three digits of its toes, and digits four and five didn't have claws or hooves. Triceratops again, may have charged at predators, and it was large enough that only large predators could attack it, such as Tyrannosaurus and Albertosaurus. A lot of Triceratops bones have been found damaged from fighting with predators, and there's evidence that Triceratops and T-Rex fought. There's one Triceratops that had T-Rex tooth marks on its brown horn that had healed. The bitten horn was broken and new bone growth. There was new bone growth after the break. Triceratops may have had the advantage in the fight because of its sharp horns. Also, the frill would have protected its neck from T-Rex and other predators. So the horns in the frill may have been defensive weapons, but not all scientists agree that this was the main reason for them. Ceratopsians as a group have very different looking frills and horns, so the argument is they would have evolved to become the same and be the most effective. So the horns and frills may have also been used for display as a way to identify its own species. And frills have also been found with blood vessel impressions, so it could have had vivid color displays. The vivid color displays could have been for mating or for warning signs of danger. The large frill may have regulated body temperature as well. Some triceratops have been found with holes in the frills, possibly caused by combat among themselves. And what's interesting, we discussed this in a previous episode, there was a new chasmosaurine called Regulaceratops that was described earlier in June. And this dinosaur had a crown plates around its head and features that independently evolved, which is a sign of convergent evolution. So it also may have had similar behaviors to other chasmosaurines, such as its fighting styles. So we know like modern mammals with similar shaped horns act similarly with horn locking or head butting. So possibly this happened with chasmosaurines too. Triceratops is often thought of as a herding animal, but there's actually no evidence that it was a herding animal. A lot of Triceratops fossils have been found as individuals, though there was one group of three juveniles found together. But one reason the Triceratops is thought of as a herding animal is that other horned dinosaurs have been known to live in herds. Bone beds have been found with two to hundreds or thousands of individuals together. But one reason it might not have been a herding animal was that Triceratops needed a lot of food to survive, so it would have been hard to consume enough food if you're in a large group. However, Triceratops may have lived in small groups, such as one male and multiple females, where the males may have fought each other for dominance, and this idea is based on what we see in modern animals. Some evidence for this is three juvenile Triceratops were found in southeastern Montana, and in 2012, another group of three Triceratops were found, including one small juvenile and adult, and they're found in Wyoming. They may have been a family, and there were signs of a T-Rex scavenging. There was puncture wounds from the teeth in the largest Triceratops' limbs. 
It's not clear how Triceratops raised its young. They hatched from eggs, though I don't believe any Ceratopsian eggs have been found so far. I think we discussed that in an earlier episode. Triceratops ate low-growing vegetation, but it may have taken down larger plants to get food it couldn't reach with just its teeth. Triceratops had a parrot-like beak and a battery of teeth. They had a lot of molars and premolars that were stacked together and used to grind leaves at the back of the mouth, and they continually replaced their teeth. There was a new study in the journal Science Advances that found that Triceratops had teeth that could slice through dense material, so it may have had a more varied diet than modern reptiles. Professor Erickson and his colleagues studied different Triceratops teeth from museums around North America, and they found that Triceratops had five layers of tissue, which is a lot compared to a horse and bison, which only have four layers, and crocodiles that only have two. These teeth created, quote, recessed central regions on cutting blades that reduced friction, and it's not clear if other dinosaurs and reptiles had these kinds of teeth. But Triceratops had jaws for grasping and plucking, not necessarily just biting. And again, the teeth were arranged in batteries of 36 to 40 tooth columns, each side of the jaw with 3 to 5 stacked teeth per column. So in total, they had between 430 to 800 teeth. Triceratops probably couldn't move too fast and spent a lot of its time grazing, like a rhinoceros. And again, there's so many Triceratops fossils have been found, they're easy enough to find. Between 2000 and 2010 alone, 47 skulls were found in the Hell Creek Formation, although no complete Triceratops skeleton has been found yet. Triceratops has the largest skull among land animals, again, about one-third the length of its body. And interestingly, in 1889, a rancher in Wyoming, he found this strange skull on his property, and to haul it off, he tried to lasso the horns, but unfortunately the horns snapped off. Triceratops fossils, though, are in high demand, and it, the cost of owning a Triceratops fossil has risen. So in 1997, an average skull cost $2,500, but in 2008, somebody purchased a Triceratops for a million dollars and then donated it to the Boston Museum of Science. Triceratops is the official state fossil of South Dakota, and it's also Wyoming's state dinosaur. And it's appeared a lot in the media. For example, we've got Land Before Time, Sarah, the Triceratops, and of course, Jurassic Park and BBC's Walking with Dinosaurs, and now Jurassic World. A few months ago, or maybe last year, there was this funny Facebook post going around. It was a picture of Steven Spielberg next to a Triceratops, and it was a photo that was taken back in the early 90s when they were filming the first Jurassic Park. And if you remember, there's a scene of a sick Triceratops, a sick and dying Triceratops, that two of the characters stumble upon. And so this picture is of Steven Spielberg with this sick and dying Triceratops. And it's a facetious post, like, oh no, Steven Spielberg hunting dinosaurs or something like that. I can't remember the details exactly, but it went viral. And there were a lot of people who were outraged and didn't realize, apparently, that one, this dinosaur is extinct, and two, this is a puppet, an animated puppet, but still a puppet. And they were a lot of people who were very angry at Steven Spielberg and declared that they'll never see his movies again, and they can't believe that he would hunt an endangered species, so... <laughs> It's pretty funny. Anyway, ancestors of Triceratops may have been Zunoceratops, which is the earliest known Ceratopsian with brow horns, and Yinglong, which is the first known Ceratopsian from the Jurassic era. Pentaceratops may have also been an early ancestor. It's Pentaceratops aquilionis. It's a small size of a buffalo dinosaur that was described in 2014 and it was sitting in a museum. Its bones were sitting in a museum for 75 years before it was studied and found to be its own species. It may have been a cousin of Triceratops. It had five horns compared to Triceratops three, but it lived millions of years before Triceratops. It probably migrated from Asia. And if you want to learn more about Pentaceratops aquilionis, we talk about it in episode 15. So again, Triceratops was a Ceratopsian, and Ceratopsians were Ornithischians. Ceratopsians lived in North America and Asia, and they had beaks and cheek teeth to help them eat fibrous vegetation. They also had a frill that they used for defense or regulating body temperature or possibly attracting mates or even signaling danger. They probably traveled in herds and, by that logic, stampede if threatened. There's a few subfamilies of Ceratopsid. There's the Chasmosaurinae, which they had large brow horns and long frills. And then there's Centrosaurines, which had short brow horns and shorter frills with long spines coming out of the frills. Chasmosaurinae fossils have been found in western Canada and the western U.S. as well as northern Mexico. 